know the three stages of delusion, wrong notion that carries forward. <clears throat> Three stages of delusion, wrong notion, so this series I have changed the title Becoming a Seeker, so initially it was Become a Seeker, so we understand the first part, I do not know, let me know it, so second is that I do not understand let me understand it. So how you understand it? Through contemplation. You allow the intellect to come in the front. You are aware. You think of it. If you do not think, nothing is going to happen. So you see, the very first stage is more or less habitual, instinctive, impulsive living. From our birth. So the first problem of this habitual, impulsive, and instinctive living, if I use the word, let us take, use that word, attachment. Huh? So our topic is, know the three stages of delusion and always be ready to change the perspective in our life. So what is the first stage? First stage is habitual, impulsive, instinctive living. So you can summarize that. Uh, it's a first problem is something like attachment. And there are very subtler layers of attachment, very subtler layers of attachment in our life that we don't notice. We were dependent on the mom at the time of the birth. <clears throat> so you can see that attachment is dependency. You can see dependency at the psychological level. Physical level, we have to depend on the food, clothes, house, car, etc., etc. We are thinking. And if you have any question, you just interfere. It's very important that you are thinking. So at the physical level, there is no problem. But it is challenging <clears throat> the dependence at the emotional and mental level. So what is the most important point here? The most important point that the moment I meet a person, I start expecting. So that expectation brings the dependence. For anything and everything, it happens at the emotional and the mental level. I believe you are getting it. A sense of dependence, attachment, giving more value. Why I give more value? Because I expect. Why I expect? Because I want peace and happiness. Just think of it. You wake up in the morning, huh? and I say bad morning. <laughs> what it means? I expect from the sun to rise in a particular way so that it gives me a good morning, which is not possible in our life. Not possible. Why it happens? Instinctive, impulsive, habitual mind. Now, if this, uh, these thoughts and this kind of a life continues, what happens? It gives rise to second problem. What is the second problem? I expected something from you. You did not fulfill. There is an emotional leaning. There is an emotional and mental leaning towards people, things, objects, relationship. So ask yourself, why? 
Uh, we are in the second phase. Why? Contemplate and reflect. Why there is an emotional and mental leaning towards people, things, objects, society, nation. So our master says it is because of fear and insecurity. So the first problem, <clears throat> I do not notice, it gives rise to the second problem, fear and insecurity. And that fear and insecurity results in sorrow and suffering. I start blaming. Take our example of our, our dear friend. I lived a loveless life. Who told you to live loveless life? There's a better example. Who told you to live your loveless life? So that mind cannot go inside to look what is love. First, let me understand what is love and why I am expecting love from others. You see, if you rationalize I live loveless life, it what it means? I have to blame the other. Why I have to blame other? Go to the first stage of the problem attachment. Are you getting it? Is it very clear? So the second problem is sorrow and the suffering. Then I suffer. You know, you see the another statement, I live loveless life. It means I'm suffering because of you. <laughs> you are not listening to see me. That is why I'm suffering. Ears are yours. You need an attention. <laughs> you have to listen. Why should I suffer? So second stage, pay attention and you have to think of it. If you find there is a uh, doubt, ask me again. So emotional independence for insecurity and the fear deep inside. That is the second problem and that results in lot of sorrow and suffering, my friends. It leads to mood swing. Uh, it leads to crying, sadness, unnecessary. You know, when we, when the problem reaches to the second stage, it is very challenging. Have you seen with the drug addiction? The withdrawal symptoms is so powerful. It is because of this. Understand that clearly. In our life, at the even at the subtler level. So people ask me, what's a, what's a problem if I take a coffee every day in the morning? There is no problem. If these two stages are not living in your mind. No problem at all. But there is a problem. So now think of it, first stage, second stage, what is the third stage? The third stage, we say delusion. Because I live in delusion, that is why it is very difficult for me to withdraw, to have, uh, to withdraw from any instinctive and impulsive behavior. That is why it is very difficult to have the, you know, to withdraw from the withdrawal symptoms. So you see, simple word, attachment, first stage, sorrow in the suffering, second stage, third stage is delusion, confusion, wrong notion in the mind. So master says purify the mind. Think of this. I was giving a lesson to another 14 year old girl and uh, I said, how many times you get upset over your mom? Huh? Yes. A couple of times. I said, you have to apply. I do not know. Let me know it. Always remember. What? I do not know. That is why I got upset. I do not know. That is why I got, I have a delusion. So start thinking. In the second week, and she said, the moment I started thinking, that being upset has gone. 
You just try this. You need not to believe. So first and the second stage leads to confusion, delusion. Here, what happens? The mind has taken over the intellect. That is why we have a delusion. And we have to bring the intellect in the front. I do not understand. Let me understand. Go back to the same statement, I live loveless life. Normal statement. Now draw a conclusion because of the other partner. I live my loveless life. Huh? And I am blaming. It comes from the second stage. And the mind has taken over the intellect. On the other hand, he's a great genius. So our master says that I may be a great genius. In my profession, I may be a failure in my personal relationship. We have seen that. We have seen that. So what happens when these three stages takes place in my life? A sense of helplessness is there in my mind. What should I do? That is why I start crying. I had a lot of tears. Krishna is laughing. Everyone cries, you know, don't worry. I also cried many a times. But now that, so now understand, so helplessness needs guidance from the teacher. That is why we have the three principles. I do not know, let me know it. I do not understand, let me understand it. I do not experience, let me practice. Now we are going deeper into these principles, how these principles work. Self-medication will not work. What is self-medication? I lived my loveless life. And what is the prescription meditation in uh, medication in Eastern wisdom? Understand. Your loveless life is nothing but a delusion. A wrong notion. Created by the attachment. That is why you are suffering. I'm using the same example. I have nothing to do with that great guy. So you see that that is why Eastern wisdom helps us to recognize the root of the problem and shows the path. Because the mind is confused, the intellect cannot do anything. Intellect loses the power to push back the mind. That is why we have to learn these principles of Eastern wisdom to be very clear. And that is the process of becoming a seeker. That is the process of becoming a seeker. My master used to, used to say a common word, which are, which are. So those people, uh, Indian guys who attended his sessions, which are, who contemplate, think of it. First, think of the problem from where it has come. What is the root cause? And we have already underlined uh, the root cause is uh, attachment. One single word. And we can dependency, giving more value to the things, expectations all the time. And that, if it grows in my mind, it leads to uh, sorrow and the suffering. And this sorrow and the suffering, it, when it goes into the third stage, we say everything outside is responsible for my sorrow and suffering, except me. Except me. I'm such a good guy, you see that. And I'm so kind. <laughs> you see that. And I, you might have heard, you know, I have, I've been so kind, you know. I've been humane all my life. And I'm still suffering because you are crazy. You are guided by the wrong motion. You are guided by the delusion. So your mind is the problem. Mind is the problem. Understand that. So when you, any time problem comes, follow. Oh, I didn't know. That is why I have a problem. Oh, there is some delusion and wrong motion. Let me sit and find out. You start thinking and you will see 50% of your challenges goes away. That is very important in becoming a seeker. 
so that your intellect is always in front of the mind. Mind will continue to demand. Mind will continue to expect. Because of it is instinctive, because of its habitual nature. Because of its habitual nature. Going further, So the mind then asks, then who am I? And then we become a human being. How we become a human being? That I covered in the last three sessions. Uh, Eastern wisdom says we have 8.4 million species on this universe. And out of that human being, it from that. Why? Only because of the intellect. And that intellect gives me the higher self-awareness. So when I start using the intellect, I start living in a higher self-awareness. Mind cannot take over me. Attachment and expectations are gone. And then I realize that I am living with the wrong notions, delusion, maya. Now see the other point our masters talks about in this journey, that how mind gets the vibe that there is a permanent peace and happiness. Think of this. How I get it? How I get the first impulse? Did anybody teach me that here, this is happiness, you have to learn, this is happiness, this is love, this is wisdom? Nobody teaches. Do you see that? Nobody teaches. So that is the first indication that, yes, when I get a pleasure by taking a cup of coffee, it means there is something deeper hidden within me that I have to find out. That I have to find out. It is within me. Can I get rid of these likes and dislikes, hatred and the love and attachment and detachment and then see what happens? That is what happened to Buddha. That love overflowed, became compassion outside. How mind felt happiness when we were born? Did anybody teach us? We didn't know any language. Think of this. Why we think of this? Because mind must realize that happiness, that love, that wisdom is within me. That is real self. If I do not think the mind will continue to move instinctively, habitually expecting from the world, and then we continue to suffer. We continue to suffer. Did anyone teach us to live, search, and find peace, happiness, love, and wisdom? There is no discipline except the Eastern wisdom. That is why we have to learn these simple principles. And once we are mature, it means we need a mental and intellectual maturity that is becoming a seeker. Simple. And that is why when we learn these principles, a kind of mental and intellectual security takes place. At that time, if you ask, do I love peace? Yes. So peace is my nature. I have repeated many a times. Do I love happiness? Happiness is my nature. That is why I love. If you say, I hate you, so do I love anyone who 
hates me? Or just ask the question, do I love stress? No. Who says it in my mind? Who is that? What is the center from where this answer comes? That is a glimpse that we have a real self. The real self is full of peace and happiness, love and wisdom. So seeker is one who is always in search for this permanent happiness, love and wisdom in his life. Whatever the conditions is there. Whatever the conditions are outside. Why? Because that peace and happiness are independent of the outer conditions. Outer, whether it's a weather condition, social condition, family condition. Did you ever ask, is seeking permanent peace, happiness, right or wrong? No. Well, ask the question. What the answer comes? It is right. Why you are not asking? Why you are not searching? When in relationship, a profession, talking to someone, living with someone, why don't you ask this question? I forget it. Why you forget it? Delusion, wrong notion, three stages. Did you get it? It is because of the first three stages I forget it. So what happens? By contemplation, we land up with the right question. I told you that we need an emotional and mental maturity to become a seeker. And the seeker always succeeds in meditation. That results into awakening and realization. If that maturity is not there, so that is why this question is seeking permanent peace and happiness within me while talking to you, while living in relationship, while uh, doing my professional activity is right or wrong. So if it is right, I constantly live with the higher self-awareness in my day-to-day -day life, in my day-to-day -day relationship. Think of this. It's not a big deal. Nothing big deal. It is very simple, straight. We already understand that all kinds of pleasure are short-lived happiness. They come and go. The mind, because of the delusion, feels that when I come in contact with an object, for example, coffee or tea or a person or a honey, I feel happy. The mind, because of the delusion, gives the responsibility of the happiness to the object outside that is not there. That is the delusion. And that demands only emotional and mental maturity. Nothing else. And if we don't have that maturity, that mind continues to run outside, running all the time, that causes the wandering mind. So when I understand that my mind is wandering or agitated because of the first three stages that I just explained. So what is going to happen? You have the mental and the intellectual maturity. And in that maturity, mind is ready to Treat the path of awakening and realization.
to understand the three stages, how they, how the mind enters into the delusion, allow the intellect to come, contemplate and reflect. Anytime you feel you are responsible for my misery and problem, bring the intellect in front and see what is the reality. And when you start exploring, reflecting on it, you will find that, oh, you are already relaxed. Why? Mind, mind is making me crazy. And that's what I have been saying again and again and again. That this instinctive, habitual, impulsive mind makes you believe that happiness, peace are outside with a person, with an event, with an object, and we are already into delusion. Then we try to rationalize. Because our rationalization is guided by the instinctive, habitual mind, that is why we need a teacher. That is why we have a master and seeker tradition. Did you understand that? Because now the mind is constantly guided. I don't want to listen. Look at the same statement. I lived loveless life for 27 years. Oh, very sorry to hear about you. Very sorry. You lived loveless life. So because, you know, because of the content in the mind for 27 years concluded, there the intellect is not ready to follow. That is the state of helplessness. And that is why we started the master in a disciple tradition. <laughs> there is no other reason. We all are intelligent. Perhaps you more you are more intelligent than the teacher. Is Bill Gates not more intelligent than us? <laughs> we all are intelligent. Think of this. Think. It, it demands your thinking. Oh, but we take these words. Uh, last point is very important. Uh, is also very important. And then uh, uh, this mind, when it continues to live in the delusion, it leads to a continued state of suffering in the mind. Even outside, you are not suffering. And it is caused by cultural conditioning, personal conditioning, and universal conditioning. Three levels of it. Cultural means social. I belong to a particular religion or a cult and a dogma. They say you will suffer because what will happen? Huh? If you continue to pray God, huh? you will go to heaven. Come on, I'm suffering now. I'm not interested in going to heaven in the future. I want peace and happiness now. So like this, you have a lot of cultural conditioning. We have to get rid of it. Eastern wisdom says we are not interested in that. We are not interested in future. Same thing, the personal conditioning, personal preferences. Personal preferences dictated by the likes and dislikes, hate and the love. I hate this. Don't express it. You don't like it, it's okay. Do you see that? You don't like it. It's okay. Keep your mind pure. And then we have a universal suffering, like Ida Hurricane recently came. We have to endure that. We have to safeguard that. So the ultimate message is three stages of the suffering, and we demand from the mind and intellect that we should have an emotional and mental maturity in relationship to my life, in relationship to my thought, speech, and action. I may be extremely intelligent in other factors. That's okay. So with that understanding, let us start our practice, my friend.